Who the fuck are you? Where the fuck am I? Answer me! Where, where are you going? Oh yeah, that's it. Walk away. Go on, just walk away, you chicken shit! My name is David Crow. We'll get to the reasons why there's a selection of knives on the table a little later. But first, I wish to talk to you on a personal level. Oh, and uh, am I lonely? No. I've chosen you out of a long list of candidates for this. So I should be honoured. Not honoured. Curious, perhaps. Maybe even grateful. I'm not grateful at the minute, David. I'm not honoured. I'm not even pleased. But what I am is scared. Do you understand that? I understand. You don't need to feel scared. It's not time for that yet. I'd like for you to feel relaxed. People talk freer when they're at ease. I like nothing better than a good chat. Give me a few beers and a table full of good friends and I'm happier than a pig in shit. So don't get me wrong. Well, my mouth stays shut because I'm tied to a chair, helpless. Perhaps I should help to loosen your tongue. You don't need to do that. Then let's talk. Don't think of this as your final hour, John. Think of it as a chance to rid your soul of anything and everything that ever bothered you. However, I'm not here to judge you. See me as a mirror for all the evil, heinous crimes that you've committed. A chance for you to step from the darkness into the light once again. This is fucking crazy. I've committed no crimes. So sure you are of yourself. So confident in your innocence. Who do you think I am? John Patrick Hatcher. Married to Ellen Josephine Hatcher. Your wife of ten years. A successful psychiatrist with a thriving practice. I've committed no crimes. In this life, perhaps. You changed your name 12 years ago, John. A new identity. A new town. You have the wrong man. I swear it. You'll forgive me if I don't take your word for it. What did I ever do to you? Now is not the time for that. Your wife is a beautiful woman. Young, vibrant, alive with energy. It concerns me that you cheated on her. I never cheated on my wife. This only confirms your clinical insanity. Are you impotent? I'm not gonna play your silly game with you. Does the feeling of a woman's body not turn you on? Are you so devoid of emotion that the thought of pleasuring a woman, even one close to you, is repulsive? SHUT THE FUCK UP! <laughs> Not very doctorly conduct. Touch the nerve, perhaps. Uh, 
I see you become powerful when angry. That little glimmer of a man that you once were. God. Because you're going to need him more and more as this continues. How does it feel to cheat on someone you love? I honestly don't know what you're talking about. You probably don't. So you're a new person now, after all. What are you doing? I'm going to drug you, John. You see, as good as our little conversation is beginning to get, I know how powerful you are. You won't just allow me access to the memories you've trained your mind how to forget. This will help you remember. Get that fucking thing away from me. I don't know how many times you want me to tell you that you have the wrong man. You're wasting your time. Is this sodium pentatal? Yes, John. You forgive me if I tell the truth of what I've observed so far. A classic narcissistic temperament, coupled with a psychotic social displacement, hidden behind a wall of false calm and control. In other words, you're batshit crazy. <laughs> I won't agree with you, John, only this account seems to differ from the one you've given me before. You were a patient of mine? If that was real sodium pentatol I'd given you, we wouldn't be having this conversation. You can drop the false acting now. You obviously think I'm a fool, John! This was a test of honesty, and you failed! However, this here... Well, this here will have a total different effect on you. What's in that syringe? Freedom! Before I become a human pincushion, would you like to share what you just give me this time? Don't worry, John. You'll feel the effect soon enough. It'll start as a tingling in your face. An itch you wish to scratch. Soon, it'll become a heightened sense of awareness, followed quickly by redness. As the release of histamines rush through your bloodstream. So you've poisoned me. That's all you needed to say? I don't want to spend my last few hours being given a fucking lecture about bodily functions. <laughs> Even in the face of death, you laugh. I don't believe you've poisoned me. So sure you are. In a short while, you'll feel that tingling sensation I've spoken about. When that happens, the process of killing your cells has begun. Let me guess. That's when the shit will hit the fan. No. That's when you'll be begging me to help you. Now where were we? 
Ah, yeah, we were talking about movies before we got distracted. What type of movies do you like to watch? How long are you going to continue with this? Always answering a question with a question. Didn't your mom ever teach you that was rude? My mama taught me a lot of things. How not to be a fucking slob, but be a good man. But she never taught me how to deal with a psycho who ties you to a chair and asks you stupid questions all afternoon. I can tell that you feel it. This is only the first wave. What is it you gave me, you fuck? Now, John! Have I got your attention? You don't have much time. What is it you want? What is your real name? You know this already. My name is John Hatcher. Your real name! Not that bastard creation you've dreamed up in your mind! Why? I want you to face the truth. A past you've hidden from the one person who created such horror and destruction. You. I can't. Then you'll die. Tell me. Tell me! David Waters. I, I haven't poisoned you, David. I injected you with a mega dose of niacinamide. A B vitamin that causes your body to tingle and flush. <laughs> it's totally harmless. <laughs> this is only the beginning. You miss Jessica? What do you think, Detective? I think you're harboring a lot of anger. My wife is dead. Yes, she is dead. And under very suspicious circumstances. Hang on. I'm a suspect. We're keeping our options open, David. You told me it was a suicide. Looks can be deceiving. Just get out of my house. I'm not finished the interview yet. Just get the fuck out of my office. Now. Get yourself a good lawyer, David. You're gonna need one.
<laughs> the fuck is he going for me?
30 minutes, right? 30 of your finest minutes. Is he going to be able to do it? He looks a bit out of it. Oh, don't you worry. My boy is a seasoned pro. It's your money, bud. It's for a good time. What's the matter? Usually man is pretty happy after sex. Once this opportunity is gone, I will not offer it again. <laughs> Even in the face of death, you laugh. <laughs> Tell the truth. What is your real name? Dead Waters. Dead Waters. Dead Waters. Dead Waters. When did you meet your current wife? I met 11 years ago. So she only knows you as John Hatchett. Look, where is this game going? Answer the question. We met shortly after I moved here. You know this already, I presume. So she knows nothing of your past. I have no past. We both know that's untrue. I've seen you on those... Long, lonely nights. The ones where no distraction can come to your rescue. You sat there, idly watching your computer screen. Lost in a reverie. Guilt carries a heavy burden. What about you, Crow? What drives you? Yeah, so far we've turned the microscope on me. But what about you? I see a man driven by repressed anger. A man who is slighted, wronged, even confused. I see a coward here, Crow. A low life coward who uses manipulation and twisted games to satisfy his needs. But who you really are is so well hidden that I don't think you know who you truly are. Why don't I clear that up for you right now? You're a lost soul who craves the attention of his mommy. His mommy! In Oedipus' terms, all you want to do is fuck her! What a sad, sick bastard you really are. Is that the state of your analysis of me so far? Well, you've been analysing me. I've been busy on a little project of my own. It's amazing what you can do with editing software these days. I'm sure your wife will be very entertained by your little uh, tete-a-tete with our friend Harriet. Did you enjoy fucking her? 
I'm so caught up, I never got a chance to ask before. Fuck you. She know I was tied up. Oh, well she also believed that you had no control over your dick. You were inside her. Fucking her. Didn't that pussy feel so sweet? She put me inside her. I'm sorry. The video won't show that. There's no shame in getting excited. Harriet is a sexy young girl. What's done is done. In 24 hours, give or take, your wife should be receiving a nice little package. It'll contain your location and a DVD of your <laughs> greatest hits with Harriet. You see, the question is, will she want to save you? Or will she want to save your marriage? Don't you see how sick this is? You need help. You want to help me now? If you let me, yes. You tried before, David. Don't you remember? I remember all my patients. You weren't one of them. I don't waste my time on triers, fakes. Just let me try. No. You had your chance. Who hurt you? Who said it was me that was hurt? What did you do? Her name was Jessica. Barely 25. She was beautiful, exotic. I knew the very moment that I laid eyes on her that she was the one. I wanted to possess her, control her, be with her. I wanted to fuck her. So I set about planning it in the greatest detail I knew how. I probably knew her better than she knew herself. I never wanted to hurt her. Believe me, I never wanted to hurt her. You could say that I loved her in my own way, but that love, for some reason, and some people, is never quite enough. I can remember her even now, all this time later. The sweet smell of blossoms from her hair, the taste of her skin. She used to love cocoa butter. Smell. That smell drove me crazy with envy. Envy of you, Doctor! Your life with her. Oh, yeah, how happy you seemed on the outside, but behind closed doors, another fucking story was to be told. One of lust, denial, betrayal, and lies. You put me in that position. When I made that choice, I loved your first wife more than you did. She had a glow, an energy. It was intoxicating, it was like a drug. And I wanted some of that. I deserved some of that. So I decided to get to know her a little better. That illusion was to crumble. The agreeable nature disappeared. Hatred filled her eyes, and I knew in that instant, right in that instant, that my destiny was different. I knew she loved to swim. Every day. Religiously. The waves. Crashing against the shore. Shh. Can you hear them? It's like... Just like music. The smell of the sea breeze. All I have to do 
Let's close my eyes and I'm there. Struggles at first, but it's no use. I squeeze tighter and tighter. And then I hear a cracking ball. I was careful not to grip too tightly. Just enough pressure so she fell unconscious. And a slam against the rock face to take care of the rest and fool the coroner's report. I didn't enjoy it though, David. I took no pleasure from it. Do you still want to help me, Doctor? <laughs> you sick, twisted motherfucker! I'll get free from this, I tell you. Fucking hard up and make you weird. I swear to Christ! I swear to Christ! All this time, you thought she died of natural causes. This was a way to ease your guilt for the affair you were having. And this brings all the guilt crashing down upon your shoulders once again. You see, <coughs> lies eventually catch up. Are you going to kill me now? Is that my lesson? I have this planned out. Remember? And what is the plan? I want to find out your past. There's a lot more you are not telling me. Including why you have conveniently forgotten that I was once a patient of yours. I don't believe you were a patient of mine. Let's take a trip back 13 years, shall we? To a thriving practice with a good psychiatrist who treated his patients with respect and courtesy. He helped them over the problems, the phobias, made them feel welcome, a part of his family. I can remember the deep brown colour of your leather couch. The noise it made when you crossed and uncrossed your legs. I can remember Maggie, your receptionist. She used to love lilies, and you had them delivered to her desk every Thursday without fail. A good receptionist is a happy receptionist. That's what you always said, isn't it? How do you know all this? At first we'd have sessions once a week. Then, after a short while, we stepped up to having two a week. Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's how I knew Lily's arrived on that day. Maggie'd sign for them as I waited to be called at reception. Assume me this isn't bullshit. What was I treating you for? This isn't bullshit, Doctor. Has your psychiatric brain diminished over the years? You have a compulsive disorder. With sociopathic tendencies. Oedipus, social, sexual dysfunction, with issues relating to intimacy. Congratulations. Almost like you are reading it from a case file. Accurate and brilliant, as always. I'm very impressed, considering you've spent the vast majority of the past five days unconscious. Now the real question beckons. Why did you stop treating me? You were sick, David. Beyond help that I could provide. So you do remember me? Yes, I remember you. I got you a place in a very reputable mental institute. Oh, yeah. Ivory Pines. Strange name given to a place that contained neither ivory nor pine. Do you remember the day they came to take me away from your offices? Yes. It's an exhilarating feeling being juiced with 2,000 volts of electricity. A strange, 
almost exciting feeling of emptying your bells never quite leaves your senses. I can still remember being semi-conscious. A straitjacket clumsily wrapped around my shoulders. They closed it so tightly that my shoulder popped right out of its socket. I was left in a holding cell for three days with shit in my pants and a dislocated shoulder. A reputable institute indeed. I guess the only real sense of enjoyment was knowing that on that very morning, right before I came for my weekly session, I killed your wife. I had my revenge before I even knew it. Fuck you. I tried to help you. You deserve everything you got. I'm sure you thought so. You disrupted meetings. You were drugged. You're drugs. The mind is a delicate Hawking David. Sometimes it takes time to get the balance right. I was psychotic on them. Unbalanced. The drugs that you prescribed. I hallucinated creating a so-called better life for myself. One that included your wife and taking your place from you. Tell me, how does it feel to realize that you caused your own wife's death? I didn't. I... You murdered her. Your regime, your dosage. You broke her neck. She, she drowned. I didn't kill your wife, David. It was an accident. She slipped and fell to her death. The poor girl broke her neck and drowned. You know too many details. You bastard. You did it. You actually did it. I spoke truthfully about ivory pines in our sessions. The rest is just imagination and fantasy. I don't believe you. Have you ever thought that she wanted to escape you? That she threw herself off that cliff to be free from your self-obsessed, domineering ways. She was an excellent swimmer. I never controlled her. She was free to do as she pleased. And you in return? It was an open, free-speaking marriage. We cared deeply for each other. Did you ever beat her? No. Never. That's a lie. I never hit a woman. Jessica, perhaps. What are you trying to say? Every man has a rage within them. An uncontrollable urge. You, maybe. I've owned up to my sins. Have you? Listen, I'm getting sick and tired of this game. It's been five days. I'm cold, I'm weary, I've been beaten, drugged and tortured. What more do you want to do with me? I say when this game is over. How you know what it's like to be under a microscope? Your every life's detail under scrutiny. It's rather uncomfortable, isn't it? I'm not sick. You are. Who is Sarah Redden? Who was Sarah Redmond, David? She was patient, but... Funny how easily you remembered her. She wasn't a sick, repulsive fuck like you. I have a tendency to try and forget nightmares. How convenient. What were you treating her for? Patient Dr. Confidentiality. I can't disclose that. With my current mood, I would suggest that you tell me. I was treating her for post-traumatic stress syndrome. When did you start treating her? Thirteen years ago.
between the two. I'm scared, David. I know. Was she beautiful? I'm a professional. That's not the question I asked you. Was she beautiful? I guess you could say she was pretty. Yes. What happened to her? This nightmare stop. I can't feel anything else. Watch her children get murdered right in front of her by her husband. How tragic. Was she a referral case or a walk-in? Most of my patients were referrals. You know this. I never took you for a kind-hearted soul, David. You always struck me as being a Hard as nails, professional. Maybe you're just good at bluffing. Look, what has this got to do with when anything? When did you start fucking her? It was, it was an accident. Oops, my dick just slipped in. Sorry, Sarah. So professional you are. I'm just glad you didn't decide that I had a nice ass and accidentally fuck me too. It wasn't like that. Then what was it like? Have you ever met someone who you thought you knew forever, but you never spoken a word? Yeah. Your wife. What do you mean? I've been watching her, David. She's beautiful. Stay away from her. I mean it. You're not in a position to bargain. You see, how this all ends depends upon how truthful you are. When did you start fucking Sarah? After two, three seconds, then. You're a quick mover, Doc. I didn't make a pass at it, that's what you mean. I'm sure. It happened naturally. Lost into love, is that it? Something like that. But I guess that's something your twisted mind can't comprehend. I can comprehend plenty. Including seeing true lies. What's the purpose of this? I want you to tell me what happened between you and her. Why did your sessions end? They ran that course. That's a lie. No matter. We'll get back to that later. 
Tell me how our children died. Sad. Did you love her? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Am I a monster, David? You're troubled. My mom used to tell me I was special. She'd hold me in her arms and whisper such beautiful praises. I loved her so much. It was a sad day when she died. Tell me more about Sarah. Even though she'd been through so much pain and anguish, There was an inner strength to her. Those are the good days. But if she was distant, troubled, worried constantly, almost always in a hypervigilant state. Had you ever treated a patient like her before? Her case is unique to me. So you decided fucking her was the best medicine? We fell for each other. You had a young, beautiful wife at home. Why would you choose someone so troubled? Mental illness is nothing to be ashamed of. In her case, it could be controlled, and in time, healed. Did your wife know of your affair? No, she didn't. And what was your plan? To continue seeing both women? No. I planned to tell Jessica everything and end our marriage. So why did you stop seeing Sarah? Our hypervigilance got out of control. I'm sorry. I don't know who I am anymore. I can't seem to make this nightmare go away. I don't want to hurt you. Don't let me help you. I don't think I can be helped. Oh, don't be.
इस जीव पर Jack do this. Why? Huh? Why? Jack. Is it that you want to kill me? Is that it, Jack? Please. I beg you. So you see, Trader, I couldn't treat the woman I loved and be professional at the same time. She needed more intensive care. I hope you didn't send her to Ivory Pines. No, I didn't. Only the real nutcases get to go there, apparently. It's a maximum security facility. Tell me again how you managed to escape. Apparently, they disagreed with your clinical evaluation. So they just let you walk right out the front gate, huh? Something like that, yeah. But we're not discussing me right now, are we? Maybe later I might let you in on a little secret. I don't buy this sudden turnaround we have here. Why would you give up so easily? This is the truth, David. Who are you? Calm down, Sarah. It's okay. I don't have time for this. I have to get back to the kids. The children are gone. Don't be stupid. I've just been with them five minutes ago. They're dead. You're just trying to trick me. Why? Why would you do that? It's a delusion. You're crazy. Let me go before I call the police. Do you know where you are? No. Do you know who you are? Sarah. Okay, you have to listen to me. You're having a psychotic episode brought on by a traumatic event. I believe you. You remember, don't you? You remember your husband? Jack. Where did you go every Sunday, Sarah? It's not true. Jack shot them. He killed both your children before turning the weapon on himself. It's okay. I'm going to help you.
They're already gone, aren't they? Sarah! Don't need you! Don't run away. You don't understand, David. I'm being normal. I know I've let you down. I'm not perfect, Sarah. No one is. I said no expectations. What does that mean? You're hiding behind an easy ghetto clause that absolves you from guilt. I don't want you. Sarah, no, that's not true. <laughs> Let me go. Don't. 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 Thank you. I don't want to hurt you. Let me go. Let me go. I got the call that Jessica had died at that very moment. They fished her body out of the bay. You asked me a few days ago why I changed my name. Now you know. Two lovers killed on the same day. You don't have much luck with women, do you? How cruel can you be? This isn't the end, David. I told you everything. Remember a while ago I told you I would let you choose when I have all the truth? Yeah. Well, that time is nearly upon us. But first, I have to prepare things.
God, you're awake. What the fuck is going on? I told you the truth. I don't think we ever discussed why I have a selection of knives. Did we, David? No. Have you ever heard of the term... Fractional dissection? No. No? Let me tell you what it is. <laughs> It's when all your vital organs have been removed and the empty carcass that remains is dissected into its fractional parts. Now this would normally be performed under more strictly professional terms, but sometimes you just gotta make do with what you have to hand. Since I don't have surgical scalpels and saws, I have to make do with chisels. Oh no. And hunting knives. Rather crude, I know, but it just means I'll have to work just that little bit harder, won't I? It'll be a workout in itself, David. You see? It's all in the little oh. details. The prep work. Oh, no, no. That's what my father used to say. <laughs> I don't give a shit what your father used to say. You're a lying son of a bitch. <laughs> so hostile. Did you really, really think that I was going to let you go? You said when you found out the, the truth. truth that I would let you choose, yes. I remember. And don't you worry. That time is coming. But first, I have to finish my prep work. So shut your mouth, or I will cut your tongue out. It's almost time. <laughs> oh no, where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> I don't know this stuff. Allow me to present to you Ellen Josephine Hatchett, your wife. Sweet Jesus. Remember that choice we spoke about earlier? You're going to have to make the ultimate choice. I want you to decide which of you lives. I promise I will let go whomever you choose to set free. You're crazy. You better not have hurt her. Maybe your evaluation was correct, Doc. 
Don't worry, John. It's not time for that yet. Stupid fox that I threw pines let you go. Not exactly. It's amazing what a little ingenuity you'll do for a man. A quick wit. And an even quicker knife. Now to wake up your pretty wife so that we can all finally learn the truth of what happened 13 years ago. I like to call that a little eye opener. You sick fucking bastard. John, are you okay? I'm fine, honey. Did he hurt you? I don't think so. How touching. For the purpose of this conversation, I'm going to call you by your real name. Sarah. Not that mutant creation, Ellen. So let me bring you up to speed. Sarah, I brought you here because you are the only person who really, truly knows what happened 13 years ago. I was told you were dead in a very convincing manner. He was psychological mind trick John came up with. He said that if I could forget about my old life, draw a line under it, I could learn to live free again. So that's what we did. We created a fictional death so convincing that I almost forgot about my past so that I could move on. So everything I was told was bullshit? No. No. No, it's true. It's just a matter of perspective, that's all. You substituted reality for a lie. So wrong to want to be free. I was suffering from PTSD. It was a 24 hour, 365 day a year nightmare. Am I sorry? No. Did it hurt anyone? No. Oh, don't be so quick to dismiss this. But you have hit the nail on the head, as it were, with the word hurt. I'm sure John doesn't know the real truth. I don't know what you're talking about. Some elements of John's recounting of this tale are true. From his perspective. His wife's dead, for instance. Oh, cut the bullshit. You killed her. No, John. Sarah did. But that's a lie! Don't believe him, he's trying to twist things. Is this another one of your sick games, David? This is the sickest game of all. And the funny thing is, it's not of my doing. What's he talking about? The mind is a powerful weapon, John. When used correctly, you can accomplish anything. Even the unthinkable. Shut up. It's not true. I would have thought you'd have picked up on the subtle signs. Those days of planning. Is it true, sir? She knew where you live. She knew your wife loved to dive. It doesn't make me a murderer, honey. Why would I do this? To have you, of course. Shut the fuck up, I asked, John. Honey, why would I do this? We lived together happily for over 12 years. I think you'd know at this stage if I was a murderer, right? Right? I believe you. It's sad that she so easily manipulated you, John. You were the fall guy for a woman who craved your attention, your love, your money. But your wife to pay the ultimate price with her life she dived constantly for over 10 years 
Why would she suddenly make a mistake? I was with you when you got the call. Remember, John? No. You don't believe me. You <laughs> weren't. I was there. Phone call was part of the fictional story, Sarah. You weren't there. I got the call outside my office. I was there. What did you do, Sarah? I did what every woman would in the same situation. I protected my man. I wasn't about to let another woman take you away from me. At least not a cheating whore that fucked the local pool boy. You didn't know that, did you? An exotic woman of noble bearings, I'm sure. <laughs> What a joke. You could slide in her every night of the week and twice on Sunday. And all it took was a crooked smile and a pat in the ass. Just remember to leave a 50 cent on the dresser when you leave. Good times were our speciality. She excelled in your late night study time, John. This gave her ample opportunity. Why her pussy was at Grand Central Station. A train arriving every five minutes. I followed her. Got to know her patterns. Where she dived. You took me there once. She would dive at 5 a.m. every morning. Remember the sky so vividly now. It had hints of red and purple in it. And she wore a pink bathing suit that left nothing to the imagination. I crept up from behind her. My hands were around her neck. I never knew anyone could make such a horrid sound like she did. Didn't last long though. I walked to the temple, put an end to that. She fell to the floor. I thought I'd killed her, but she was still breathing. I finished her by pushing her over the edge. And when I let her go, I felt so free. The air felt fresher somehow. I remember the color of that sky. But you saved me, John. I'm so sorry. Now, John, you have a decision to make. Who lives, and who dies? Choose me, David. Please. You've both lied. Both caused pain. You must see this as an opportunity. An opportunity to clear your conscience. It's been a heavy five days for you, David. Now is your chance to see the plan through to its final conclusion. Choose me, Damon. I love you. <laughs> tick, tick, David.
<laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I love you too, Sarah. Make your decision. Who is it to be? Just do what you came here to do from the beginning. You promised. She lived.
Thank you.